Hello, some of you have been asking about how to use uh, DCL Studio. If you're unaware, DCL Studio is a middleware that sits on top of Decentraland's desktop renderer. Um, since Decentraland is open source, it does give us access to their code. Uh, it happens to be they're using Unity as their desktop renderer, uh, also their website renderer, but uh, knowing this, we can access some of their files and create this middleware. This project uh, allows you to create custom camera angles. Uh, it's really for content creators to stream content either directly back inside Decentraland, out to Twitch, uh, save the content to be edited, to go to Instagram or any of the other social media platforms. Um, and you can also stream directly out to other services. Uh, it just gives you much broader reach to an audience uh, then relying on the uh, user to go inside of Decentraland uh, to see it themselves. Um, and it does give you some cooler angles than the camera being stuck to someone's uh, head. Uh, so what we'll be doing here is setting up uh, the studio, showing you how to edit the keyframes, um, to create your own custom angles. Uh, you can build on top of it if you want uh, then. Uh, but you don't need a programmer to, to do this. It will take a little bit of setup, um, but it, it won't be too bad, and that's, that's kind of a one-time thing. Um, and uh, hopefully it, it won't be too bad. Um, but first thing we need to do is uh, to install Git. Git is a uh, version control system uh, that a lot of people use. Uh, Decentraland uses it, but major, major companies uh, use Git all the time. This tutorial is going to be more based on Windows. Uh, I don't know enough about a Mac to really do all this. Um, so this is more for Windows, but if someone wants to help Mac users out, that would be appreciated. So to find out whether you have Git or not, we'll go to our Windows thing, go to Command Prompt. Um, then we will type in git dash dash version. If you have a version number come up, that means you've got it successfully installed and all good. Uh, if not, I would rely going back to the git documentation. Again, here's download for Windows. Uh, just make sure when you get it going, uh, you are able to see the version number. That makes sure you uh, are, <laughs> you have it correctly installed. The next thing we will want to do is to download the Unity editor itself. Um, since the central land's using Unity, that's what we will building, be building our middleware on top of. So here you can go to the, the Unity download archive. You don't want to get the newest one because Unity does break things uh, between versions. So it's best to use the version that the central land is using. Um, currently, they are using version 2021.3.3 F1. So in the archive here, we go down, we find our version number that we want, we click Unity Hub. I already have Unity Hub uh, installed. If you don't have it installed, hopefully it'll go down and uh, install it for you. If not, you can always, um, you can always just uh, Google it and download the Unity Hub here, then back over here, click Unity Hub, open in Unity Hub, and it'll, uh, it'll open up Unity Hub and it'll have a process for you to, to install the project right here, uh, or install, install Unity, the uh, editor inside, inside of Hub. So now we have Git installed, Unity's installing, or is done installing. Now it's time to start messing around with uh, Decentraland's files. Since Decentraland is open source, um, they do have their files on GitHub. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we needed to install Git. Um, we are 
just going to clone their project and build on top of what they already have. So, inside your command prompt, you have your, you've got your Git version, everything's looking good. You want to go to a directory uh, that you want this project to live. Um, you can do cd dot dot to go back directories. Um, cd space and then the directory name to go forward. And you can just type in a different directory if you want to go to a different drive. Uh, if you want to and don't feel comfortable doing it inside command prompt with making a new directory, you can always go to that drive, click new, new folder, create a new folder that way. DCL studio. And now in our, in our D drive, DIR for directories, we can see DCL studio. You can do make, uh, I think it's mkdir dcl studio two, and that'll that's a that's another way to do it if you just wanted to do it uh, command prompt, um, but either way it's the same as doing it. So now we go cd into our dcl studio folder that we just created. We can type in dir to give us what's in the directory, and it's empty which is good. So now we want to get all these files onto our folder here. So we're going to run git space clone and then in the Decentraland desktop GitHub code here you can see the URL for it. We'll copy that. We'll go back to our terminal, paste that in, and we'll hit enter. Now this is cloning all of those files that we saw on the GitHub onto this directory itself. Uh, this is a relatively quick process. As you can see, it's already done. We can just dir, and there's explorer.desktop, um, for in Windows, we can see it here, DCL Studio, Explorer Desktop. This is everything we just cloned, which is great. Now, inside of our Unity Hub, all this will be empty for you. Uh, Unity should have been downloaded at this point in time. Um, click, if, if, if you do need, there is installs, you can click here. Uh, the, if you find your, the version number, you can click on this little cog. Add modules here, you know, make sure you have Visual Studio module installed. Um, I don't really, you don't really need any of the others at this point in time uh, besides the window build uh, and the WebGL build if, if you want. I, you don't really need that. Uh, but just the Windows build support is good for now. And and of course, uh, and of course, you don't really need the Android. You don't need the Android builds either. Um, so make sure all those modules are installed. Under projects here, we'll go to open. Uh, then we will go to where our where we just created and cloned that GitHub. So mine was in data, DCL Studio, Explorer Desktop, that was what has got cloned. Inside the clone folders, we'll see Unity Renderer Desktop. Let's go into that, and we'll have some random folders here. Well, they're not random, but we'll have some folders in here, uh, and that's okay. We'll just click Open. And now we'll see it start doing its thing. Now this will take quite a bit of time. As it starts getting all the packages uh, that Decentraland requires and starts compiling things, um, setting up shaders, this will, will, will take some time. So about five, 10 minutes 
uh, you can just let this go. All right, so after some time waiting, you should uh, be presented with this screen from Unity. Uh, this means the project should be loaded, um, empty here. If we go down a little bit about Unity, this is your hierarchy. This is where you can see what objects are running in your scene, your scene view, your game view. This is what the end user would see running the executable. Uh, inspector will show what you select on the game object, and the project down here is really uh, your your files uh, that are on your hard drive. If you haven't, if your view doesn't look like this, you can go to Windows, Layout, Reset All Layouts, and Continue, and it will set your layout like this. So what we'll want to do is go into Assets to Scenes and double-click Main Scene. Now we are in the main scene. Again, we haven't done anything with BCL Studio. This is purely Decentraland. Uh, in main, we have a couple scripts. Uh, in debug config, we have one script as well. So we'll, this one script uh, is incredibly powerful uh, because we can change our start coordinates. If you're uh, doing a shoot, you don't really want to go to Genesis Plaza every time and teleport out um, to the scene. Uh, and even changing the realm. Again, it is purely decentralized, so if you do want to change the realm or the locations, everything will work perfectly as, as before. Uh, also, this is where we can set um, where we're pointing it to. So if we have a dev server, or Heroku server, uh, we can point uh, DCL Studio to uh, that. So if we don't want to record something that is on the mainland yet, um, but is something still in the development environment that is possible. So let's go in here. Uh, we'll click uh, Browse open, uh, open Browser on Start and WebSocket SSL. Uh, also, instead of Loki, I was looking today. Uh, let's try uh, DG. Let's try to see some people. Um, cool. So all that should be set now. And now what we'll want to do is hit play. So this will start everything up. Um, you'll, you'll start to see the, the hierarchy uh, start to fill out as, as assets start get, getting loaded in by Decentraland since all of, all of it's streamed in. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll start populating here. That's why it's kind of empty to start with. Um, because they are all streamed in. Um, you'll see a web browser will open up. Um, it'll ask you to sign in, play as guest, whatever you want to do. Um, oh. oh my God. All right, finally, if we get our password correctly, we can uh, log in, you know, same as we always do. Uh, it looks just like it did with the, the web browser, except now you, instead of going to Decentraland, it'll just say connected up here. Now, without closing the web browser, we can go back to the Unity editor, and we can start seeing things start getting filled out um, as it loads. So we are in Decentraland. Exact same thing as the desktop render, but uh, in the Unity browser itself. Um, we can go do exactly what we want to do, same, same as always. Um, I was hoping there were going to be some people here, but uh, it, is, it is running live. So if there were people running around, you, you would see them. Uh, the other thing that's fun is that now we can see all the objects and how everything start, how Decentraland kind of works, the, the, the bare bones of it, what's actually happening in the background. Um, and the other really fun thing is now if we, instead of the game view, which we're all accustomed to seeing, because that's what the user sees, we can click on scene, and now we have full Decentraland in editor, where we can look around, we can see everything, we can move around, uh, we can 
middle mouse button, uh, scroll, zoom in and out, pan left and right, right mouse button to, to look around, but this is everything that gets loaded. And you can kind of see how Decentraland starts loading things up uh, and the, the draw distance of it. Um, so, you know, this is what you get, what loads in for you, but as you start walking, more things get loaded and loaded in as things get offloaded. So it's really uh, kind of exciting to see. All right, so we downloaded everything that we needed. Uh, we opened up uh, the Decentraland Desktop Render in the Unity Editor and was able to play around with that. That's fairly cool. Uh, but now let's get into the studio. So uh, if you're still on the scene, you can hit the Stop button up here, and that'll stop it. Um, and we just want to have the scene stop. Uh, then we will go to the uh, GitHub, uh, which will have DCL Studio. Uh, DCL Studio package .unity package. Click that and click download. That'll download the package. Um, and that will look like this. So inside, uh, back in the Unity editor, right click, import package, custom package, and then navigate to where you just downloaded that, DCL Studio package .unity package, and click Open. We want to make sure everything is checked because this is all the stuff that is needed to run the studio. And click Import. This will take a couple, uh, couple seconds um, as everything gets imported, and now we should be good. All right. So now we have DCL Studio. It added a couple uh, folders, camera materials. This is all the uh, camera materials for the preview cameras. Um, what else? Uh, DCL Studio, here's all the scripts, uh, the camera animations, the camera animators. Um, but you know, you don't, if you don't wanna mess with that, you don't really need to. Uh, what we're gonna do is take this DCL Studio, drag it right up into the hierarchy and drop it. And now we have DCL Studio. And we can click in here, and we can see we have all our scripts uh, that we're using. Um, now we can go into game. This is game view one. I have it set up where I have three monitors. Display three. Let's see if it's pre aspect too. So display three has, uh, I, I use Display 3 as my, as my control board. You can either do this, you don't need to do this, you can use the keys um, to just cycle through the cameras, but for having more control, being able to see where the other, um, the other views are, uh, be able to run the presets, you really need to have a, another monitor. Uh, to get the other monitors to work, we will go to uh, DCL Video Studio. You have to select Set Multi Display. Um, also, DCL Studio Canvas and Secondary Display, those can be turned on or off based on whether you want to use this or not. Um, by default, they're turned on, but maybe you don't have a third monitor or a second monitor. Uh, you can turn them off. Under display or secondary display camera, if you click this and go over to the right, you can see target display and it says display three. That says it's going to the third display. You can change it to display two if you only have two displays or if you want it to display on the second screen. Again, that's just for the control board. The uh, main game screen will be uh, still displayed on display one. So, this will be our, our, pretty much our display. And what we'll wanna do here now is we can right click on cameras and we can see all the different cameras uh, that we have, but we don't have really a scene. So we have no idea, we can click on scene, it's empty, there is a camera here, but we have no idea what the hell it's looking at because uh, um, there's, there's no point of to reference. So what I like to do is I like to right click this prefab, unpack completely just to, just so I know it's 
not messing with anything else, uh, even though it shouldn't. Um, and then I will go into here and I will set my coordinates of where I want to build something. So let me uh, look up where I want to go and I'll be back. All right, so we'll go to minus 117, minus 122, uh, the block, one of Pat's places, and we'll just uh, start it up. All right, now that we're at the block, we can start playing with the cameras. So what I like to do is try to move my windows around. Actually, I, I do this on multiple screens, uh, but for this, I'll try to do this on one. Uh, it is definitely easier if you have multiple screens. So I take my, uh, my I have the scene here that we can see all the stuff that, that's loaded in. Um, we can see the guy down there and all the goodness uh, and then I take the game I drag it over here and dock it and now I'm able to see the game and the what the user can actually see uh, if your screen does look weird that's probably because it's under free aspect you know it's usually 1920 by 1080 or 16 by 9 however you want to do it um, and that gives us a starting point here so now we can we can see what what the users will see or what we stream or everything, but we also have the, the scene editor here. Now in the hierarchy, we want to search for where we had DCL Studio. It probably got shuffled around as things were loaded in. Uh, we want to go to cameras, twirl down the cameras with the little arrow icon and we can see all our cameras here. Now if we click on camera one, there's a camera highlighted in the scene, which is great. If we, if you want to try to, if it's, if it's off somewhere or you can't find it, you click over here and press it. And then go back into the scene, middle mouse button just to make sure it has view or over it and press F, that'll focus on the actual thing. So that's great, but we don't, we can't see what the, what the camera's looking at. <clears throat> so over in the inspector now, we want to turn on that camera. And this is pretty much what the scripts are doing uh, and the buttons, but we just kind of a manual process why we set up the cameras. So we'll turn on the camera, and now we can see exactly what that camera sees, which is great, but now how do we control the camera? So if we go to Window, Animation, Animation, another window will pop up that has keyframes. If you're used to After Effects or Premiere or any sort of keyframe animation, um, this will start looking very familiar to you. So I usually take this and move this somewhere that's easily seeable. And now if I start scrubbing, I can see the camera actually animate, which is awesome. And these will all be, these are all defined from the last project I, I did. I don't know. Uh, whose who's land this was specifically for. Uh, you know, when you, when you are done, you want to turn off your cameras uh, to make sure that the, the user has focus because otherwise you'll start the central land and some camera will be on and it won't be the right process happening. So, you know, we can, uh, Excuse me, just make sure, uh, you can see here, just make sure to uh, turn the cameras off when you're done editing them. So what we want to do is to go one by one, camera, camera one, turn it on, look down here, scrub through it, and then we'll want to go to the first keyframe, which I like to use this button, and that'll jump over to make sure that we are on top of that keyframe. 
and then we can hit this little red button, and that'll start recording. Now, if we go into our camera, it's very much uh, like any 3D editing program. Uh, rotate, uh, E, um, R is scale, and uh, W, move. So with uh, record on, we can start to move our camera around. We'll rotate it. We'll move it back a little bit. Um, one thing to know is sometimes this will be set to global, which is great uh, You know, if you want to move something in a global position. But sometimes it's tough with rotation because you try to rotate your camera and it gets all wonky like that. Uh, so what you want to do is under global, make sure it's on local, and now it'll rotate the camera on the local axis. So we can try to line up a shot here. I, that's where, you know, the local's not that good for, uh, for moving, but for rotation. So we'll just try to line something real quickly up here. And oops, if you, if you miss click off of it, you can always click it back. Um, and then we'll want to move somewhere along the timeline. You know, that last keyframe is still there from the last project. So, you know, I don't know if you want to uh, delete that and start from scratch. We can. Um, let's just delete that keyframe. Now, now, now it's not doing anything. It's not going anywhere. Uh, but let's go out sometime, uh, you know, two, two seconds. And move the camera up a little bit. And it's... Record still on, so it's creating the keyframes for us automatically, and move it to the side, and you know, I don't know, not very good, but you kind of get the idea here. Um, so maybe something like that, I don't know. Uh, but then we can go through, and now we can see the whole animation. And if we start at the beginning and press the space bar, we can see it in real time and it's extremely fast. Um, so we could take the keyframes out and drag them out here, maybe make it to five seconds, and you know, it's a little bit smoother. Um, this isn't really to, to tell you to, uh, how, to, how to eye up your shots, just how to use the studio. Um, then we can go in the middle here, and uh, you know, if we want to you know, have it come out a little bit, and as it's going up, it can, you know, something now it goes out and up and over, and you know you start start just playing with it a little bit. <clears throat> if you click on the curves tab here, you can see all the animation happening uh, on a on a curve line. So what you can do is this is where you can set certain easings. If you want, you know, it to come in or you know slower, slower, at, faster at the start, slower, you know, however you want it to achieve that motion, uh, you, can, you can play with the curves. So it'll go real fast and then maybe slow down or speed up. I don't even know what, what one that is I'm affecting, but you know, you can, <laughs> they're all color coordinated here when you, when you wanna look at them. Uh, but that's how you would do um, different, different types of fancier easings. Uh, and again, you can move these here to, to, to get different different locations, um, you know, that, that, it's, that, that's really it. Uh, if you have this off and you move your camera somewhere like this and you're like, oh, uh, dang it, I, uh, I really wish I had turned automation, auto, auto keyframes on or record on because I really like this spot, you can just go over here um, and click that uh, and that'll add a keyframe on that spot. And in the back in the dope sheet, you can see it added a keyframe for it. So that's really, you know, how you how you start to, to use it. Uh, I mean, that's that's some some sort of camera angle. <laughs> uh, and if you don't like things, you can just delete them as well. It looks like there are two two little guys. You know what that is. So that's really it. Uh, please note when you, if you do have record on and you start turning things on and off, it's going to record that as 
you know, you had turned it on and then you turned it off and it, it'll record that and that'll definitely break some things. So uh, you definitely want to make sure there's nothing like that in here. Um, you can delete that and, you know, turn, turn record off and then turn your camera off and uh, you're back to square one. But now when we go back to camera one and we turn it back on, it'll still have those animations that we set up for us. Um, and the good thing about this is usually Unity will uh, not, re not remember things in the hierarchy, but since it is an animation uh, asset, it's kind of like a file, um, it, it, it saves. Uh, so when you do stop, uh, stop Unity, this will actually save, where some of the stuff you do in the hierarchy won't save. But you don't need to know that. Uh, so what we'd want to do is kind of go through here camera by camera and just make sure, you know, we set them all up on how exactly we want them to move. If, if you don't have any keyframes, it's more of a still shot um, that, you know, I knew this shot wasn't going to move from, from the specific one or I ran out of time and just wanted to have the shot and it not really animate. Um, you know, it's, you can just have no keyframes and that'll, that'll have it working. Uh, or, you know, you can go back out and turn auto keyframing on and, you know, move it out and wherever you want to go. Oops. Move it down and in. And over. And now we have that one. So that turned that from a static um, camera into one that does have animations now. So that's pretty much all you need to do is to have 10 cameras working essentially without, or, or nine cameras working without doing any coding or anything. Um, if you want to add cameras, remove cameras, uh, just if you want to remove cameras, just don't use all of them. <laughs> that's the easiest way. Uh, but I w don't delete anything underneath these, these cameras because they are all linked in and it'll could break some things. So if you're only using two of them, just leave everything as is and, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Um, and that's it. If you, if you need more, maybe we could talk about it sometime, but then you have to get into the code and, and look at things. But I think, uh, you know, nine cameras should do now. And, you know, if we go back to display three unity, you can't, have two displays of what the game person's seeing at the same time. It's kind of annoying. So you go down, display three, and you can see all the, the preview cameras that we have set up. Of course, none of them are very good uh, because they're just all blank areas of where I was shooting last. But, you know, if we click one now, we can see that it goes through and kind of goes up the building. Um, and, you know, we click back on player cam. It'll, it'll go back to our, our player camera. Uh, it's post-processing, we can override the post-processing. If we turn this on, we can bump up the saturation. Uh, it won't show in this view, but again, back in our main display, you can see now all the saturation is, is brought up and you can see it in the scene view here. Uh, the same with reducing the saturation. Um, we've got contrast and lens distort, which is interesting. Um, don't use it that heavy-handed, but you can you can get the idea. Uh, black on and off is just a simple uh, black uh, plane that you know changes opacity essentially as you turn it on and off. Um, you can instantly turn these things off, and that'll go back to your original scene and and turn them back on, and it'll jump to these points. Um, reset all of them. And then uh, all these, all these work. Uh, presets are interesting. So if you had like saturation like this, contrast like that, and some crazy lens distort, you can click a preset, hit set. Now you you back uh, doing doing your thing, uh, and it's a live show, and you're like, all right, well I liked how that looked for this camera. Let's go to the preset and. This is how long it'll take it. So if we click preset one, now it'll start tweening um, over to those to those presets, and it'll get back to where where you where you had saved them. Uh, if you want them to move faster, you can 
edit this number to, to make them go faster or slower. Um, so I'll just turn all that off and turn them. Then free cam, uh, you click on that. Uh, again, this will be your display. But free cam essentially. FreeCam just lets you use WASD in the right mouse button to kind of look around. Um, it's good if you have all your cameras that are set up. Uh, actually, I need to lock the player so he's not moving around because you can see him start loading in and unloading things. Uh, that's a small bug, but that can be fixed. Um, but if you get your 10 cameras set and it's showtime and you're like, oh man, I really wish I had gotten a bird's eye view, uh, that's kind of what free cam's for. Um, so you can, you know, set it up there and do some recording or some time lapsing. Um, and then, you know, back on player cam. Uh, that's uh, just L. We'll bring you, oh, nope. Well, there we are. So, okay. Then, if you uh, like, I was saying, if you, if you if you don't want to use all this stuff, or you don't really care about the post processing, you don't presets, and you don't have another camera, or, or another um, another monitor, uh, you can remember these controls: left shift, left control, nothing. Uh, left shift uh, resumes animation. Left control pauses animation. Nothing restarts animation. Um, so if you only had one camera, you know, you would want it probably, or one monitor, uh, you know, uh, you can use the buttons here. Camera one would be, you know, number one. Again, we, we moved, so that's one of the things is you don't want to move. We moved, so that's one of the things is you don't want your player moving around too much uh, because you can start loading and unloading parts of the scene. Um, so you don't want him you know, walking away and then all of a sudden your scene's gone. Uh, but all the, all the uh, cameras work, um, you know, the stills and stuff. So just one through 10. Uh, but where I was saying, uh, so if you keep hitting one, it'll, you know, restart the camera every time. But if you hold, shh. Um, Uh, so I don't think the, uh, the, the, the left shift and control will work in the Unity editor, but we'll test them out when we create a build. Uh, control is taking focus off the screen. I'm, I'm kind of screwing it up. Uh, but if you're back in the cameras uh, and you're done with the, the, the animation, you want to go back to your player, it's just zero, and that'll bring you back to your, back to your guy. And like I said, L will bring you to the free look, uh, and L again will return you back uh, to, to normal. Um, I, don't even, I don't know where that, where I even wandered off to. So. Uh, so that's really all you need to know on how to set the cameras up. Um, the, the last thing to do would really be to uh, to make a build, I was wondering if I could get the camera to. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> so uh, everything's good. Uh, all your cameras are off. All your animations are set correctly now. Um, what I'm going to do is. 
is, is, is create a build. So what I'm going to do now is create a build. Um, so we don't have to use this in editor because one of the problems is you have all this other space and it, it does run slower in the editor. Um, I do have, if you press U, the UI does go away so you can get cleaner shots um, uh, that, that you stream. Uh, U brings it back up. So uh, to get it out of the editor and into a more usable format for ourselves, uh, you know, come show day or whatever we want to do, we want to go to File, Build Settings, PC, Mac, and Linux standalone, Target Platform, Windows, just actually just all the stuff. <laughs> all the stuff's the same. Main scene, package, like let it, this should be what you have. Um, click Build. And then uh, we'll just go desktop, new folder, DCL Studio, oops, DCL Studio, um, the block. Since these cameras were set up specifically for the block, even though they weren't, uh, that's kind of how I do it right now. Um, could build a system that you could have all the cameras in there and set it. Um, wouldn't be that difficult, but I don't know. Uh, so this will take some time. Uh, as before, when you first just, you know, started the project up, it took a little bit. So this this will take some time to, to do its thing too, and uh, you know, uh, we'll let it we'll let it run. Thank you. So now that it's done. Um, uh, creating the build and exporting it. Uh, we're kind of done with uh, Unity Renderer at this point in time, or the editor um, at this point in time. And in our folder now, we'll have uh, this, this little project with a little uh, Decentraland executable. And if you're creating cameras to hand off to a content creator or something, this is probably what you would hand them. You don't need to give them the whole Unity project. You would just hand them this executable file for them to to, to use on their own. Um, so we'll uh, just double click it, but just start it like any other application. It'll again bring over the website for you to connect like we've been doing this, uh, this whole time. Let's go with connected. And it loads in. And there we are. Now we're full screen Decentraland uh, desktop renderer with uh, the camera system working. Everything works as normal. Uh, so this is what I would actually have on my main screen. Um, and then, you know, hide the UI. Uh, then using something like OBS or something, I would uh, then send, uh, either record this video to edit it up or uh, stream it out or uh, round trip it back into Decentraland. Um, wait, wait. So uh, what I was saying before was that if you don't have a, uh, if you don't have multiple monitors, you can use, still use one monitor and have the cameras uh, and you can use uh, control. Uh, if you start the camera just by pushing the button like button one how, wherever you want, press control and that camera number again. So control plus one, control plus two for camera two, uh, and it'll pause the camera there. So if there is something you like happening, you can pause the camera, um, shift, and then one will resume it. So control one pauses, shift one will resume, control one pauses again, and then just pressing one, We'll restart that same clip from the beginning. Um, again, zero back to yourself. L for free look, free cam, look around, get up high. It, it really does run a lot smoother uh, when it is taking out of the Unity editor. There, there is a lot of background processes that are happening there, uh, plus rendering it multiple times that it's not needed. Um, but there we go. Back to the cameras that. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, and 
Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we go. Uh, you know, it is exactly the central land, and it's just the middleware built on top of that. Uh, the central land will be making changes to the desktop renderer that you know will probably break the software and have to be uh, fixed. And it's just the way it goes, because um, it is the, the the desktop is still in beta. Um, so that's that's really it, and I uh, really hope you guys enjoy uh, DCL Studio. Um, and good luck uh, out there if you have any questions. Uh, you know, I'm Shu's in uh, Discord. You can find me. Um, and uh, that, that's I think that's it. Um, you know, oh, uh, Escape uh, will close out uh, the app completely. Uh, just know that. Uh, sometimes that uh, can be a pain, and I think I might refactor it that it does have to be like control and escape or something because it had happened in the middle of a shoot, uh, accidentally hitting escape and it dropping out and having to reload. It's a pain, so I don't want that to happen. Um, but I, I really think that's it. Um, I guess the, the only thing to do is really uh, get the community to try it out and figure out what, what I missed. <laughs> I'm explaining. All right. Thank you.